Hello folks, it's Barry here. Welcome to My Virgin Kitchen. Today is our second video in British Recipe Month. We've already had that amazing shepherd's pie, which you guys were loving. I didn't realize shepherd's pie was so popular and thank you for all the pictures you've been sending me. Today I have a sweet tooth. We are making a gorgeous Bakewell tart. It is so yummy, really easy to make, and I really, really, really hope you give it a go. If you do, uh, you need the following ingredients. Hit pause on the video. You're sniffing? You probably didn't hear that. Boston's just sniffing beneath me. It pours now, write down the ingredients. You would not get any more British unless you were sat in Buckingham Palace with Mary Poppins, sipping tea with a tie and a bowler hat on, singing Chim Chimney. Yeah, it's pretty British. This is how you do it. First thing you're gonna need is a flan dish, okay? Mine was a removable base one, just helps at the end. Uh, you wanna lightly grease that so it's nice and coated, and then roll out your short crust pastry. Now, of course, you can make your own pastry from scratch, and it's not too hard to make short crust, but this saves so much time buying the store-bought stuff. So roll it out and completely line your tray with that. Cut off any excess, and here's a little tip. Any excess you've got, uh, roll it out and cut it into little discs. Sit it in a cup tray, tray with a splodger jam, and you've got some gorgeous jam jam tarts. So good, they're also very nostalgic jam tarts, so please make the most of your leftover pastry. Uh, it is related now to the jam, we've almost gone off on a tangent, but you wanna spoon down around about two to three tablespoons of your jam of choice on top of that pastry, spreading it all out in all the nooks and crannies. We're using strawberry jam today, uh, but you could use raspberry. In fact, if you wanna like freak out, you could use lime or even orange marmalade. It wouldn't be a Bakewell tart then, but it'd be pretty cool. Next up, you're gonna need yourself a bowl. So grab your room temperature butter and sugar, mix it all in there and grab a whisk and just beat it, beat it, Michael Jackson style. Don't have to sing it, just beat it all together until it's nice and creamy. Then all you wanna do is add in one egg and also the zest of a lemon. Keep mixing that through until it's all combined. Nice, wet, creamy mixture. Oosh. Believe it or not, we're nearly at the end. So into that bowl, we're gonna add some dry ingredients. You're gonna tip in your ground up almonds, also the plain flour, and a little bit of baking powder. Get that all in there and mix it through. The mixture should start to get quite dry and doughy, but just keep working through until you've got a lovely, good old mixture right there. What we're gonna do with that mixture is spoon it on top of that jam layer. Get it on there, it might be a little bit tricky at first, but just keep working it out until it's nice and evenly spread. So before we put it in the oven, if you have a nut allergy, as I say, you're probably not doing uh, this recipe, but uh, you can finish it by putting some flaked almonds on top. You could just put a few, or you could do it very delicately like I did, all over, or you could just dump them all on top. Once they're in there, you're gonna shove it in your oven for a good 25 minutes to half an hour until it's looking all gorgeous and brown on the top. Oh, shiver me timbers. With it cooled down, but still slightly warm, it tastes so good when it's freshly baked. Sorry about that. We're gonna take it out of that dish. Remember, it's got that loose bottom on to make it much easier. Otherwise, you're gonna be like fish slicing or grease proof paper uh, will be fine. We're gonna dust it in icing sugar all on top and then take a lovely wedge out of it. Ooh, so, so good. My man's telling me no. Oh my goodness, guys, so, so good. So if you try out this recipe, don't forget to send me a picture at my virgin quitting on Twitter and Instagram. Check out my last two videos here and here. Uh, let me know any recipe suggestions for British month you'd like to see down below, and I will see you again.